Hey guys, welcome back to Unacademy. I hope you enjoyed the introduction on the intuitive concept of force and the concept of inertia because it is really very important. And now the most revered part of the mechanics that is the Newton's laws of motion will start off with the first law in this lesson. So let's go ahead. So this is the second lesson in this course. And as I discussed the concept of inertia in the last lesson, Let's give, let me give you the practical daily life example so that you can actually understand what inertia is, right? Because it is not a like physical thing, which you can pinpoint and see as this is inertia. But yes, through your daily experience, you can actually say that, yes, this is the concept of inertia. So the first example is uh, you are trying to catch a bus, right? Maybe like from your coaching to your room or from your uh, house to your coaching. Right. So just let's just say you just stand in the bus. Right. So you are standing in a bus now. OK, you didn't get a seat and you're standing in a bus. And what happens is the bus suddenly starts. Right. Suddenly accelerates forward. Right. So what do you feel? Right. Have you gone through this kind of experience? Right. Uh, you must have gone through this kind of experience once in a lifetime, if not in a bus, then maybe in a car or so. So uh, the thing which you feel is that your body suddenly jerks backwards, right? The upper part of your body suddenly jerks backwards. You get a jerk towards the back, right? It's towards the opposite direction uh, in which the bus is moving. And why this happens is because the feet, uh, when you're standing in the bus, so your legs, your feet are actually in contact with the floor of the bus, right? So what happens is that when the bus suddenly accelerates forward, so your feet, since they are contact uh, in contact with the floor of the bus, so they actually go ahead with the bus, right? But what happens is your upper part of the body, it is in air, right? And it is in rest initially. So it refuses to actually copy that sudden acceleration of the bus in the forward direction, right? So this is actually your inertia. This is your resistance of the upper part of the body, which is refusing the forward acceleration movement. So, and so what happens is that your lower part goes with the bus, but your upper part refuses to go forward. So it stays in rest at that particular instant of time. And what you get is a sudden jerk towards the ba back right towards the opposite direction in the bus is moving because your lower part of body is moving forward but your upper part refuses to move forward and that's why you get you feel a like sudden jerk towards backwards right and this is actually the doing of inertia so inertia as we have discussed it is nothing but something which resists or refuses to change the state of motion so your initial state of the motion was rest right so Therefore, when the bus is accelerating forward, the inertia is actually refusing the change of the state of motion to your upper body. It actually also does to your lower body as well, right? You may question, it is a very good question, like my feet are also at rest, right? So why is not inertia playing a role there? So, and the answer to that question will actually discuss it in much more detail in the third law of motion. But just to give you an idea, it is actually the friction, right? The friction, uh, the feet when they are contact in the f with the floor of the bus. So the friction between your feet and the floor of the bus, this is actually helping you overcome that inertia, right? And you may be surprised, but it is actually only the friction on the road, which enables you to walk forward on the road. And why does it happen? We'll discuss it in much more detail in the Newton's third law of motion. But I'm just uh, just take it for granted now that the friction between your feet and the floor of the bus helps you move forward when the bus suddenly accelerates forward. But there is nothing of this sort of friction like between the bus and your upper body, right? And so the inertia comes into picture and your upper body refuses to move. And so that's why you feel a jerk backwards, right? And so I hope this example was clear. Uh, just leave the part of like how friction helps you. We'll discuss it in the third law, but I hope the otherwise the example was clear because at least in one point of your life, you would have experienced this kind of situation. The second example is like jumping out of the running train, right? So it is of course not recommended to do so. And if you're not done so very good, very, very good. 
but if you have done so then you'll be know uh, you'll be knowing what i'm talking about but not just like out of running train it can be out of running bus running car anything like even a bicycle as well yeah so maybe you can do that like jumping uh, out of a uh, running bicycle yeah that way you can feel it if you are daring enough yeah so but anyways we are not playing x factor here so uh, what i'm trying to say is that uh, like if your friend is riding the bicycle and you are sitting on the back and if you suddenly like just uh, drop uh, from the bicycle what will happen is that uh, your body will move forward right you will again get uh, get a some kind of pull to uh, from your body in moving in the forward direction in which the bicycle mo was moving and since you are not able to control yourselves what happen is that you fall forwards right so you topple forwards and then you fall and then of course you injure yourself <laughs> right so yeah uh, advise a disclaimer uh, not to do such kind of activity just for fun sake so uh, but anyways let's discuss the physics behind it so what is happening is when you were on the bicycle right so what was happening is your entire body was in motion right uh, so your entire body was in motion and what happened is when you suddenly jump out of the bicycle so what happens is your upper part it is actually in motion in the forward direction right so again inertia is coming into picture here since your upper part is in motion here so inertia is coming into picture and it refuses to actually change the state of motion which is actually in motion of the upper body right and that's why you get a sudden pull forwards but what is happening is your feet are on the ground and again friction comes into picture here so what does this do is that friction actually stops your motion right it opposes the motion so your feet suddenly comes to rest so your feet your legs suddenly come to rest but your upper body doesn't because of the inertia and so you fall forwards right so uh, the next time you have to do it not just for fun sake but in case of emergency so what you do is uh, when you jump then you try to do so as if you are running on the ground so when you jump from the bicycle just try doing so uh, not like just jumping and standing on the ground but jumping and as if you were running alongside right so what will happen is your upper body will is in motion because of the inertia and since you will be running so your legs will also be in motion so you won't fall forwards right so your whole body will be in motion and then slowly come to stop so you won't injure yourselves in this way and of course again the third example is going upwards on an escalator so right um, you must have gone to a shopping mall one mall or the other and you must have faced an escalator there right so uh, you can do this pretty safely right if you just put one uh, if you just put your one foot on the escalator right and you keep one on the ground right so again you may have experiences you get a sudden kind of jerk uh, backwards and this is the same scenario as this one because your upper body is in rest but suddenly you want to now let your lower body come into motion right so the inertia opposes the motion of the upper body the change in the motion and the change in the state of motion of your upper body but your lower body is in motion and that's why you again get a jerk right so i hope the examples were clear and now let's go ahead so this is like this is what newton's first law of motion says as well so newton actually built on the galileo's law of inertia and this is what Uh, the statement of the first law is so every body continues to be in its state of rest or of uniform motion so this is actually the state of its overall motion in a straight line right so a straight line may not be like just 1d so a straight line can mean 1d 2d 3d anything right uh, we have seen this in motion in 1d and motion in a plane of course unless compelled by some external force to act otherwise so and this is actually contrary to the aristotle so aristotle said that you need external force for a body to be in motion but what newton's law and of course the galileo's law of inertia says that to change the state of motion of a body like either rest or uniform motion you actually need to apply an external force right so what uh, from what we can derive is that if your neck external uh, sorry this is net uh, yeah not next so if net external force on a body is zero right its acceleration is zero this uh, yeah this is actually the uh, like kind of corollary of this statement right so i think it's pretty much is clear right 
so uh, and again i've just paraphrased the same statement here so the body will actually continue with the speed it, with which it was continuing or it will continue to remain at rest until and unless you apply some kind of force right so now you can actually relate that yes when you apply force you apply acceleration and you if you apply acceleration you change the velocity or uh, uh, velocity and speed right so until and unless you apply force thereby giving some acceleration you are not going to change the velocity or the speed and that speed or velocity can also be zero right so only if you apply some external force you are going to change the state of motion that is rest or uniform motion of the body right to again discuss things like uh, just uh, in your own room like uh, if you can example a brick on the floor of your room and of course this is your uh, fan on the ceiling right so now what is happening is of course we know that now gravity is one of the things we have discussed uh, much many times right even in project and motion and just an example in the previous lesson so gravity will always apply force right will always apply some kind of pull but this brick actually can't like dig into the ground by itself yeah so the brick will remain here but somewhere gravity is being applied right and of course if you switch on your fan then there is some air pressure also applied on the brick right so air is moving and air has mass right of course the three states of matter so air does have some mass and since it is moving air so it is applying some kind of pressure or some kind of force on this brick right but the brick no matter how hard you stare at it it will not move in motion right it will not come in motion unless you are a magician and yeah but the brick will continue to remain at rest right so you can actually identify like many types of forces already being applied on this brick right so there's some force applied by the air moving air there's some sort of force applied by the gravity and god knows like how many other external forces as well we are only talking about the external force not the internal force like between atom and atom and molecule and molecule like we discussed in the physical world various types of forces right so we are only discussing about the external forces so it means that if your brick still continues to remain at rest that means that though so many forces are being applied and in various directions god knows how many but that means that all those forces are eventually cancelling out each other right because that is the only scenario where the brick will continue to remain at rest if somehow the forces were not cancelling themselves out each other and if there was some net external force remaining then this brick would have moved somewhere it would have uh, started its motion right so this is the uh, this is the direct conclusion of the newton's law of motion that we may not know all kinds of forces being applied on an object in rest or in uniform velocity right so both the cases remember not just rest but also the uniform velocity case but if it means that the object is in rest and in or in uniform velocity it means that the resultant of all forces is being zero this is a very important and a very powerful concept being derived from the newton's first law which we will use in solving a lot of questions afterwards right so uh, i hope this concept was clear and i'll see you in the next lesson